to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, November 12, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here is what's coming up tonight. Tonight, it's not just the Internet. Homeland Security is listening and following you in public places. A breaking InfoWars exclusive investigation. And caught on tape, Obamacare navigators coach to lie and partisan groups illegally masquerading as nonprofits. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. InfoWars has been exposing the different networks of spy systems that are being set up in urban areas all throughout the country. They're going largely unnoticed and most likely ignored. We've got both the gunshot detectors as well as the IntelliStreet's light fixtures that can record conversations in real time. But now, Paul Joseph Watson has another spy grid exclusive. This one is taking place in Seattle. The DHS has funded the installation of white boxes that can track the population of the entire city using Wi-Fi networks that can record the last 1,000 locations of a person using their cell phone's MAC address. And I take it that the DHS has refused to address the privacy implications of such a system. That's right, Leanne. While refusing to address privacy concerns, the Department of Homeland Security is funding a network of Wi-Fi hubs attached to utility poles in Seattle, which have the capability of tracking the last 1,000 locations of any person carrying a cell phone. Documents obtained by the Stranger newspaper reveal that the user does not even have to connect to the Wi-Fi network in order for their data to be grabbed. So-called rogue or unassociated devices can be geolocated by the secretive Wi-Fi hubs. Now, both the Seattle Police Department and the DHS have failed to account for the gargantuan privacy concerns posed by this mesh network, which in the name of aiding communication between law enforcement during an emergency opens the door for the mass unfettered surveillance of Seattle's 634,000 residents and it's also being planned for other major cities. As InfoWars has documented, this is merely one aspect of a multi-layered spy grid now being rolled out across the country that makes the Edward Snowden revelations about NSA phone and email tapping look antiquated in comparison. The company behind IntelliStreet's smart light poles now being installed in major cities like Las Vegas admits that the devices can analyze voices as well as act as surveillance cameras and track people via RFID tags. Shot spotter gunshot detectors, now installed in over 70 major U.S. cities, can also record conversations using microphones, the New York Times reported back in 2012. This represents a massive threat to whatever privacy we have left, and yet it's being rolled out with little or no public debate. Now back to Leanne in the studio with more news. Thank you, Paul. Well, if you think that the creepy factor stops there, no. The Eye of Sauron has much bigger plans for the spy grid that's going to be set up all over America. Joining me in the studio is Anthony Gucciardi, who broke these Snowden-level documents today at Infowars.com. They expose just how massive this Homeland Security spy grid is going to be. All right, well, Anthony, we just heard from Paul about the white boxes that are going up in Seattle, but the documents that you have leaked show that it's actually much deeper than that. Exactly. So what Paul's talking about is these spy boxes in Seattle, and they're collecting, or the mainstream media said they may be collecting, your IP address for your cell phone, your MAC address, your information, the last 1,000 locations you've been at through GPS locations. And that's what the media was saying that may be happening. That's what Paul was talking about. These documents that we've found now from Seattle, we've published them on a, PV, on a PDF, on StoryLeak.com, on InfoWars.com, Praise the Planet, and we've found now that not only are they admitting, yes, it tracks your IP address, it tracks your location, your th past 1,000 locations, <laughs> but it can track anything about you from your cell phone, including traffic data, and it's also live streaming at all times to police and fusion data centers in Seattle, and this is being implemented nationwide. Now, what's more than that is we've now found in the video of Paul's original report, the police said, yeah, this is potentially going to happen, but we need legal authorization to do so. 
It turns out that the report has been going on. In this uh, report we found with the government documents, it's been going on since February of 2012 even a little bit earlier than that, and it's scheduled to end in 2020. So this has been going on for about a year, and it's still going to go on until 2020 unless we do something about it. But they're saying, oh, it might might happen, it might not. You know, secretly it's, it's been going on the whole time, tracking everything you do. Right, so basically the is the NSA data center already set up in Utah in 2012, where they said, oh, we're going to do that maybe in 2013. Yeah, and also it says there's a massive sense of urgency and that they need to do it right away. $2.6 million of taxpayer money from the DHS to set this up. And you notice they always say, yeah, we're going to do it in the future, but then it already happens to acclimate you towards it. But the reason they're doing it so soon is saying we need to get this in right away now is because they know that we're so keen to this. Things like, you know, people like Snowden leaking the information about the NSA, they're losing the battle. And if they don't get this in right away and hardwired in to the fusion centers, the police headquarters, they're not going to be able to do it. So they're actually afraid of us, and that's why they're spying on us. As an aside, the DHS in Seattle had cameras at the port positioned off to the shore to see and monitor terrorists. Mm -hmm. But then they were caught turning the cameras into private homes, watching private citizens. And they complained and made a big fuss about it in Seattle, so they were forced to turn the cameras back around. This is a wow. war on us. This is a citizen tracking system designed to keep us on the grid 24-7. Even having a cell phone now, they're leeching all the data about it. They're leeching everything you do off your cell phone. And it said specifically there's filters involved where, yeah, they're tracking automatically across the board, the IP addresses in the past 1,000 locations. But there's filters. Let's say, for example, you're suspected of a crime. Well, that filter may be lifted. Or if the DHS determines that, you know, you're in a constitution-free zone, which was 100 miles from the border now, you don't have a constitution. So they can just turn off those filters and take anything from your cell phone, all your call history, everything. And they already have it, but wow. this is a whole new level. You have, you know, citywide, statewide, federal, all these spying systems all in one, amassing these huge databases and just profiling everyone, stealing all of their information. Wow, so this goes much deeper than what Edward Snowden told us with like, the prison program that was just collecting metadata. This is actual content and so much more than that. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, you know, the NSA is kind of the, the juggernaut of all of this. But what we're finding now with these documents and why they're so important and why the media needs to cover this to even become relevant somewhat anymore is because this isn't just NSA. This is a citywide, a statewide initiative to spy on citizens in addition to the federal spying with a conglomerate of uh, agencies like the DHS coming in and doing it. So this is like you're being spied on on so many levels that they're taking a little bit of metadata here, a little bit of personal data here, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And it's not about metadata. They're taking your personal data anyway, but they're just amassing it in these huge compartments of databases that it's coming from so many different angles. They have everything on you. You are the enemy. Wow. That's and, what people need to understand. And so Seattle is is just kind of the there's the start of the rollout of the mesh network, but you're, it's going to other cities as well. and. Nationwide well, soon. <laughs> well, this is the only one with documents that we found where it actually says, yeah, we're doing all this. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to happen until 2020, happened in 2012. I believe this isn't even that sophisticated. I believe places like New York City and Philadelphia are light years ahead of this. The systems they have in Las Vegas now, smart trash cans, <laughs> they take similar data. You know, systems we've seen in Europe where they had to stop them. This is all going around nationwide, worldwide. This is just the beginning. We finally have the documents showing it. So what does your gut tell you? Why do you think the American people are the enemy? Why are they setting up this huge spy grid? The reality is they're desperately afraid of us. We are winning. Ultimately, information-wise, we're winning just waking people up, but altogether, we're also winning legislatively in many ways. You know, Obamacare, major defeat, NDAA, major defeat, but at the same time, so many people are against those things. So many people are now taking legislative action through impeachment and other things like that. They can't bottle it up forever. I understand they're, you know, overlords just attacking us, attacking us, attacking us. But after a certain period of time, we're now at this, this cusp of awakening to the point where we're going to punch back. The right. sleeping giant is being awoken. And that's why they're so desperately afraid. And that's why they're saying in these documents, it's urgent that we get these systems in place. Because who knows? They're expecting riots. Hmm. They're expecting people to go into the streets and just absolutely freak out out and they need to have complete tracking and complete control of the system that's why they don't just have city tracking they don't have just have state tracking they don't just have federal tracking they have layers upon layers upon layers
years, even private businesses are tracking down and selling the information to the government. They cannot have us have our independence or freedom or they would lose. They're afraid of us. This is not them having more power than us. They are backed into a wall like a small critter, just attacking nothing because they know <laughs> they're going to lose the battle. They're going to die. Well, you know, I guess that's some good news in all of this. Is yeah, that it they is. are afraid of awakening the sleeping giant. It's a rallying cry to defeat this, is what it is. Every time we get attacked more, it's just building up our immunity. You know, the bacteria comes into our body and our immune system just crushes it. And that's how we build up defense against pathogens. And that next time, when a pathogen comes into contact, we just obliterate it. That's what happens. Well, that's what we're going to do here with InfoWars. Obliterate the massive spy grid. Thank exactly. you, Anthony. Thank you. All right, well, coming up, you have heard about Fukushima, but what about the leaking nuclear reactors that we have right here in the United States? And then find out if our nuclear power plants are at risk of a malware attack. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Radioactive substances coming from the Fukushima power plant have reached Tokyo, and the effects are so alarming that now a physician there is calling for the evacuation of Japan's largest city. The doctor noted that the white blood cell count in children has shifted from 4,000 to 2,500, which is below the threshold for a healthy immune system. Dr. Mita reports that record numbers of children with sinusitis, asthma, and he notes that even rare diseases like polymyalgia rheumatica are increasing from maybe one patient a year to now he's seeing 10 patients at a time with this rare disease. Mita said, Again, let me repeat that after the nuclear accident, enormous amounts of nuclear substances were released in the environment. Therefore, if we see an increase in symptoms that are different from the ones we've seen before, we physicians should first consider the effects of radioactivity. Mita says his real hope is to have not just children, but also adults move away from Tokyo, which is a city of almost 9 million people. But will doctors here in the U.S. need to start looking for similar symptoms? RT reports that a radioactive leak has been discovered in a reactor at one of the largest in the United States. A robot was used to confirm the leak at the South Carolina plant over the weekend inside the Unit 1's containment facility. 
A spokeswoman for Oconee Nuclear Station said that the leak remains solely inside the containment building, which is a steel-lined, airtight area with concrete walls several feet thick. She claims the leak will not put any employees or the public in danger, nor will it affect service. Now, ONS has been running since 1973, with an initial expiration date of 2013, per the 40-year regulatory standards. However, its license was extended for an additional 20 years, and now it's scheduled to expire in 2033. We'll air David Knight's in-depth report after the show. He details how Oconee was given another license extension for their facility in North Carolina. You can also check that report out at David's YouTube channel, InfoWars News HD. Now, leaky reactors are even more alarming when you combine them with the vulnerability of the spy grid. Now, the Stuxnet virus that was most likely created by the U.S. and Israel as a means to take out Iran's nuclear reactors it has spread to other countries. One of the world's top computer security experts, Eugene Kaspersky, said this week that the virus has attacked a Russian nuclear reactor. The revelation came during a Q&A session in which he argued that those spooks responsible for offensive technologies don't realize the unintended consequences of releasing malware into the wild. Everything you do is a boomerang, he added. It will get back to you. He said that, unfortunately, it's very possible that other nations, which are not in a conflict, will be victims of cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. He said it's cyberspace. There's no borders, and they share the same systems. Now, the U.S. is particularly vulnerable to cyber attacks since our entire country is wired into the smart grid, or as the former CIA director James Woolsey said, the really, really stupid grid. But perhaps they will address some of those vulnerabilities this week as they participate in the Grid X2 cyber war uh, drill. But perhaps not, because we did tell you in 2010 that Stuxnet was probably going to be the next false flag. Infowars speculated that Stuxnet was a false flag intended to both target Iran and provide a pretext for the implementation of draconian cybersecurity legislation. Despite the fact that Stuxnet was distributed through a physical USB device and not the public internet, cybersecurity legislation was being heavily promoted as a vital tool to defend the nation's infrastructure against cyber terrorism. Senator Joe Lieberman and his pal, Senator Jay Rockefeller, wanted to give Obama the power to kill the internet. You have an internet bill, it's been called the kill switch uh, bill, that uh, would allow the president to seize control or shut down portions yeah. of the internet. Cyber war is going on in some sense right now. We need this capacity in time of war. We need the capacity for the president to say, internet service provider, we've got to disconnect the American internet. Right now, China, the government, can disconnect parts of its internet in the case of war. We need to have that here, too. Well, one of the things that needs to be killed on the Internet is healthcare.gov. The potential for fraud there has been widely reported. Well, now, new video has surfaced that shows that the actual navigators are encouraging enrollees to fraud the system and trick the IRS. So we'll have that and more right after this. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, 
but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Welcome back. While we reported yesterday about the record high stock market prices being seen during the Obama administration, well, of course, that's because the current administration keeps passing legislation to allow bankers to get back into the sticky derivatives business. In late October, the House passed a bipartisan tweak to the Dodd-Frank bill, which was initially set up as a Wall Street reform to prevent another financial crisis or more bailouts. Well, now the Swaps Regulatory Improvement Act will allow predatory Wall Street financial institutions to once again engage in high-risk derivatives trading. Banks will no longer have to isolate their sketchy derivatives trading to reduce risk. The new bill rolls back the derivative regulations to let banks go back to the same set of rules that let them break the economy in the first place. Losses will once again be socialized and paid for by the American taxpayer through the FDIC. And guess who authored the majority of the bill? Citigroup. That's right, the banking institution that was largely responsible for the global financial crisis of 2008 authored 70 lines of the 85-line bill, proving once again that Congress is wholly owned by the bankers and the global elite. Well, your taxpayer dollars aren't just being wasted by paying off the banksters. Obamacare has proved to be just one big waste of federal funds. The new problem that's plaguing the Unaffordable Care Act is actually coming from the government paid workers who are supposedly trained to uphold the law. In an undercover investigation, Project Veritas found out that instead, they're advising clients on how to lie on government forms, evade legal requirements, and ignore proper procedures. Obamacare navigators that receive millions of dollars of federal taxpayer money telling applicants to lie about their health status. You lie because your premiums will be high. Okay. Obamacare navigators advising applicants that they always lie. Don't tell them. <laughs> you about that. Yeah, but don't tell them. Uh, I always allow my... Okay. <laughs> Obamacare navigators counseling applicants how to defraud the federal government. Making money on a cash basis. Business. Okay. Don't get yourself in trouble by declaring it now. Exactly. Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely with that other, just act as if that... Didn't ha happen. Okay. <laughs> Never report. report the, uh, Project Veritas heads to Texas to expose Obamacare navigator fraud. We are, we're running a campaign called Get Covered okay. America. We are right now in 11 states. Um, obviously, uh, with uh, Texas being the biggest. And Rule America claims they are a nonpartisan 501c3. Okay. This is a 501c3, okay. so it's purely a nonprofit. It's okay. nonpartisan, nonpolitical. But even their volunteers believe they were a branch of the DNC. Having Brian Pendleton speak today. He is with Enroll America, which is the official group for the DNC. Enroll America appears to be sharing data and working directly with a political action committee called Battleground Texas. Both groups were active in guiding people towards signing people up on the new government run health care exchanges. Remember, providing data, mailing lists, or other valuable resources from a 501c3 to a political action committee is prohibited unless certain conditions are met. Battleground Texas, I don't, and we are a Democratic organization. I, I am. <laughs> Battleground Texas is a political action committee. 
If you never heard of Battleground, Texas, we are new to the state. And we were started by President Obama's national field director. And their purpose, in simple terms, is to turn Texas blue. The total value of grants doled out for Democratic operatives to knock on your door and encourage you to help turn Texas into a welfare state? 67 million taxpayer dollars. And you thought that we were broke. Nope, there's always enough money to run this country into the ground. And one of the ways that they're gonna do it is with this new socialized healthcare. Navigate this. Just look at that. This was a little uh, graph put together by the Joint Economic Committee to try and help you navigate through this new healthcare system. Look at everything is gonna be funneling through the Sibelius Secretary Health and Human Services hub there. That looks like a disaster. But those guys make Obamacare look like it's, like it's hard to navigate through and, and difficult. And who wants to sign up to get involved with that? Let's see what another nonpartisan group makes it look like to sign up for Obamacare. The bigger changes are coming for those who work for larger companies but aren't covered now. That's because the government is going to require companies with 50 or more employees to cover full-time workers or pay a penalty. So more workers may find themselves covered. But what that video isn't telling you is that those employers are gonna to have to pay for health insurance out of their operating budget. That's right, because Obamacare is not a tax. So now companies that operate on a very tight budget are going to have to either make their employees be part-time or shut their doors altogether. But that video, you know what, it makes it look easy to enroll for Obamacare, which by the way, I think the uh, current enrollees total around 100,000. So you wanna compare that with 5 million cancellations so far. Well, stick around for our Prison Planet viewers. We are going to be airing Alex Jones predicts a Stuxnet false flag. And then David Knight exposes lax regulations of America's faulty nuclear reactors. So for all of our Prison Planet subscribers, you'll be able to check those out right after the news. And for those of you watching us on YouTube, consider becoming a member of Prison Planet TV. Your subscription will help to fund this operation, and you can also share the transmission with up to 10 other people at the same time, because you can share your username and password. So share this transmission and help support the info war. We'll be back here again tomorrow, weeknights at 7 p.m. Central. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Evidence implicates U.S. Israel in Stuxnet attack on Iranian nuke plants. And when I saw this over the weekend, I knew what was coming. They're going to use this, and they're now announcing they're going to use it to try to pass the Cybersecurity Act in the name of protecting critical infrastructure. Now, they've lied in the media and said that nuclear power plants are, and other key infrastructure are hooked up to the Internet. That's not true. They admit that this... Uh, Stuxnet uh, worm had to be entered in via a memory stick or hard drive directly into the Iranian water treatment uh, power uh, center, uh, relay systems, uh, critical infrastructure, and of course their nuclear power plant they're trying to build with Russian uh, aid. And now they've got uh, one of the heads uh, of the Chertoff group, uh, admitted Israeli operation, same folks bringing you the naked body scanners. Uh, coming out and saying, oh, yes, it was probably Israel. Well, no kidding, it was Israel or slash uh, the United States. And this is a shot across the bow. Kurt had articles out on this on Saturday, but it's admitted basically uh, today. But you got to love it. The system basically admits they've done this to Iran and then says, see, we need the Cybersecurity Act, which is openly written to start censoring the web, tracking everything you're doing, 
uh, allowing, quote, Obama or whoever's president in the future to have a kill switch uh, over the Internet, the power to track and control the web is the power to censor, and they admit that that is their game plan. So we're going to be breaking that down today. Uh, Stuxnet worm rampaging through Iran, IT official says. Uh, so uh, we're going to be reporting on that key stack of news. I also want to look at how they use national security to cover up the corporate crimes being carried out through the giant out-of-control government. Obama argues his assassination program is a state secret. It's admittedly illegal, including against U.S. citizens abroad. No judge, no jury. They just assassinate whoever they want, setting the precedent for global death squads. We already have snatch-and-grab teams grabbing citizens off the streets in places like the G20. A few months ago in Canada and before that last year in the United States of America. And here's another report. Army censors photos of Afghan corpses in kill for sport trial. And what is the nation reporting on from federal court uh, depositions that people working with Blackwater said that it was basically the same thing. Shooting up people's houses for sport, cocaine parties, running around naked, injecting steroids. This is the insanity of the New World Order's mercenary berserkers. Uh, so we'll continue along that line. And uh, they're making 10,000 TSA employees getting secret clearances. That way they can be given baloney terror reports to believe their job is real and fighting a real threat on a manufactured threat. Uh, and they're never allowed to blow the whistle on corruption in the TSA. So turning the entire system into a group of uh, Stasi spies, the 900 uh, or more thousand private spies, of course, part of the... Uh, Washington Post report of a few months ago kind of unveiling just the tip of the iceberg of top secret USA. Your local preachers on the dole, in many cases, of, of FEMA. Your local police have been federalized. The CIA has local officers in the threat fusion centers. All of this isn't just the illegal federalization. The feds themselves are run by the offshore mega uh, banks, and this is globalism. This is government of, for, and by the banksters. So we're going to be breaking that down. They're preparing to transfer power to Kim Jong-il's snotty-nosed son, just like he was given power, the snot-nosed son, Kim Jong-il. We're going to be uh, breaking that down. Also, Venezuela election loosens Chavez's grip on power. Uh, we're also going to get into the economy. Gold hovers again at 1,300 an ounce. Learn more about this and other vital topics. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast or subscribe to the free podcast at InfoWars.com. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Like this report, FDA refuses to require labeling of genetically modified salmon. I'm going to talk about why that's such a big deal. Gold hits record of 1,300 an ounce, silver at 30-year high on weakness, not just of the dollar, but global currencies across the board. The G20 is publicly admitting that they are part of a coordinated global currency devaluation. We'll talk about what that means historically uh, to everyone. Obama is arguing that their secret assassination teams that are also being used against U.S. citizens is a state secret. They're covering up a lot of massacres uh, with uh, that tool as well. Uh, evidence implicates U.S. Israel in Stuxnet attack on Iranian nuke plants. Uh, we're going to be breaking that down here on the broadcast. Report that Paul Joseph Watson's got up on PrisonPlanet.com. What a perfect example of problem, reaction, solution. Yesterday and today, all over CNN, Fox, British television, they've got all these government-connected pundits and guests 
basically admitting that Israel launched this powerful, very sophisticated worm that you'd have to have amazing levels of understanding about the core secret operating systems of Windows, but more than just that, the very industrial systems uh, that Iran is using, and this has to be plugged directly in. Someone has to sneak in to the facilities that aren't connected, power plants, uh, energy relay uh, systems, water treatment plants, traffic relay systems, uh, the nuclear power plants, uh, they're building at least two right now. And you've got to have specific knowledge of each one of those facilities and the tailor-made software that they're running off of to do this. And the AP is reporting it's sweeping through Iran with devastating effect. If you'll remember back in 1990 during Desert Storm, uh, before Desert Storm had really begun, and it was Desert Shield in 1990, Thousands of printers were shipped to Iraq with viruses loaded onto them that, that then were put onto the internal networks. And so this is very, very similar, uh, but Israel's not denying that they launched this or that Israeli operatives uh, all over the U.S. government launched this. And sure enough, it's all over the news today. Kurt Nemo predicted this a few days ago when this was first announced, uh, that uh, Iran had been hit by this high-tech uh, super worm. And, of course, spies had to be inside all of these facilities that aren't connected to other facilities to launch uh, this system. Kurt predicted properly, uh, accurately, that this would then be used, oh, my gosh, this is why we need the cybersecurity bill that's passed the House, but not the Senate, to be passed hurriedly because al-Qaeda uh, you know, may have done this and they may attack us and everything may shut down. Only the government has the personnel, the clearances through infrastructure protection to get into our chemical plants, our power plants, even more importantly, the power plant relay centers, the nuclear power plants, uh, the uh, Black Hawk helicopters we've heard that have had software loaded onto them, supposedly by hackers. This has to be a point of attack, point, point blank range attack at each location because these systems are not connected. So the globalists come in, they allow this corporate governance to come into the UN. They give security clearances, the media says, close to 900,000, it's in the multi-millions, of people, quote, in infrastructure protection. Right here in Central Texas, all the major waterways have been basically handed over to the private uh, group Lower Colorado River Authority, that's a private consortium, constantly caught in different forms of chicanery and corruption. They have cameras all over Texas, uh, literally watching people, microphones, their own spy networks. And this has all come out. But I've also got some friends who had worked in security there uh, who confirmed that this is going on. They have a more extensive camera system in Central Texas than even the feds do. And that's just one microcosm of what's happening all over the country, all over the world. This is a continuity of agenda system. That's a good way of putting it. Where whether it's England or Australia or Germany or Japan or Mexico for that matter, the same system is being put in and is administered the same way. So the globalists come in in the name of security. So they can stage terror attacks, so they can shut down infrastructure, so they can sabotage their competitors. That's what the NSA, the CIA are all about. I mean, you go back 60 years, the CIA over and over again going into third world countries, releasing bioweapons on crops, releasing locusts, releasing weevils, uh, poisoning water supplies, uh, sabotaging dams that were supplying power. And they do this to countries that aren't even against the United States, but are against the globalists. If they say no to a Fortune 100 coming in and taking over their government, they get assassinated. They get bombed. Or rebel groups get funded to then attack or overthrow the government. The CIA stages black ops, false flags, and then blames it on the governments. Or if they don't like the rebels that are in a country, they do it and blame it on them. This is all declassified. We're reporting on what this corporate Borg that's taken over our government is doing. That's what's important. This is not our government. People say, how dare you say our government's staging terror attacks? How dare you say they staged the Gulf of Tonkin? Well, that's declassified. 
we've been under this corporate governorship since 1913, but they didn't have full control then. They still don't have full control. But with the unlimited trillions they're able to get tax-free, they've been able to position themselves to have almost complete domination over the planet right now. Now they want to dominate the individual, chemically, psychologically, spiritually. So I want to go ahead as we go to break and play a clip uh, from international television with one of the uh, minions of the Chertoff group, the folks bringing you the naked body scanners and the rest of it, uh, a known group connected to Israeli intelligence big time. I mean, Chertoff's mommy and daddy were both top Mossad and uh, ear gun operatives. And here they are just throwing it in your face. How does this virus work? So this, this virus attacks the SCADA systems for industrial facilities, and that means supervisory data and control systems. What it does is it, it originally started with a USB drive. Someone would take an infected USB drive, stick it into a computer, and then it propagates through the system. It's a worm, which means it propagates by itself. It keeps moving through the system, and it hides its tracks. The techie people who analyze this think this is one of the most sophisticated pieces of malware they've ever seen. And the reason for that is it's using stolen certificates, the legitimate digital certificates that real companies use to identify themselves when they communicate. They were stolen. And then it ha exploits four previously unknown vulnerabilities in the window operating system. These are called day zero vulnerabilities. And the, the theory is, among the security experts, is that this took the resources of a nation state to create a piece of malware this sophisticated. We're going to go to break. They have the secret codes to Windows. You understand that? They can bring down the entire world system with this. In part one of this report, we looked at the danger of catastrophic failures not only from nuclear reactors, but from spent fuel pools. Tonight, we're going to look at the end-of-life issues with nuclear power, storage, decommissioning of power plants. This is the most delicate part of the whole operation, as it involves reopening the building without contaminating the area or staff on the outside. Not including the reactor building would generate 30,500 tons of waste in need of special treatment. But the figures remain questionable. The OECD cites 36,000 tons for the total shutdown of a power plant. Up until now, no site has been entirely dismantled. Depending on the method chosen, the process can take between 25 and 100 years. Plants are just now starting to be shut down after about 40 years of operation. But others are having their licenses extended with little or no public examination. Sharon Harris near Raleigh, North Carolina, has just had its license extended in spite of signs of aging and many troubles at that location. Between 1999 and 2003, there were 12 major problems requiring the shutdown of the plant. That's an average of once every four months, as opposed to the industry average of once every 18 months. Four and a half times the shutdowns as the industry average. In May of this year, the plant was shut down by the NRC for a couple of weeks when a quarter-inch crack was found inside the reactor pressure vessel head. In August, an explosion of electrical equipment caused the plant to be shut down. One week later, the same nuclear power plant was found to have a leaking valve that had released at least 10,000 gallons of radioactive water. But in spite of that history, Sharon Harris asked for and got a 20-year extension. That means that it has a license to run for 60 years. No nuclear power plant has done that. We're dealing with really old reactors, and they have to be decommissioned. If we were to follow the advice of the former chair of the NRC and shut down all the nuclear reactors, we would still have a legacy of dangerous materials from the decommissioned plants and spent fuel that threatens life on Earth. Catastrophic reactor failure during operation, radiation leaks during operation, catastrophic spent fuel fires, and pushing the storage of dangerous wastes onto future generations for centuries or millennia, Yet, Obama wants to shut down all coal plants and go nuclear. In the next installment, we'll look at the global warming narrative and Obama's love affair with nuclear. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. If you want to learn, prepare, and protect yourself from nuclear and biological threats, InfoWarsStore.com has a wide range of books, films, and products.